Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse here and I am back for another hardware review video. And this, believe it or not, is my first uh, real recording for the channel using the old, uh, the new iPhone 13 Pro Max. So hopefully it's nice and clear for you. Anyway, we are looking at the Nintendo Switch OLED model. We have the box right here. Um, I was really close to canceling the pre-order. I pre-ordered it thinking that, oh, if I was able to get a pre-order, I would get one. I can I could cancel it later. Um, but you know, with, uh, with all the chip shortages and scalping with everything electronic these days, I figured while I was able to get a pre-order, let's grab it. And even just a couple days before this thing shipped, I thought about canceling it because I'm like, well... There's really no performance up upgrade or anything like that. And, you know, there was a lot of rumors floating around about a 4K Switch, which I know, of course, Nintendo is working on their, whatever their new system is going to be post this one. But nevertheless, I'm weak-willed, and I kept the pre-order anyway, so here we go. Like I said, we've got the box here. Um, just kind of pan around a little bit here for you show you there's the new kickstand mode i'll show you that in a moment we've got the dock now they, this one does come in a white you can get a white dock and a white switch with white joy cons i like the darker theme so that's what we went with just got our switch logo a little bit of information on the other side that side we got some stuff and then on the back we've got our little it shows them kind of pulling it out of the dock there we got our little joy con stuff going there so there you go that is the box for the nintendo switch moving to something slightly more interesting here is the dock for the new, new the new nintendo switch oled and you notice right away it's a lot cleaner um you don't have this giant switch you know there's like a switch icon here but it's not really that big um it's kind of got a rubber, smooth, like a rubber feeling on the bottom If you, when you put it on the desk. No feet, though, like the last one had. And I think the, the, part, the port here for the switch to dock into is maybe a little bit wider, so I know there was some concerns from people about being able to scratch the screen if you put it into the dock or took it out so that hopefully shouldn't be as much of a problem but it does feel a little bit looser so just be aware of that you can kind of rattle around in there and i haven't really used other than you know just kind of putting the switch in and out of it i haven't really used this dock all that much well really at all because i still have my old switch hooked up to my TV and the nice thing is, is that the old docks are compatible so maybe you have a you know a few kids or something you know, or you want to have you know one switch here one or one dock there um, you know you can use either dock for this new model on the back you have your little compartment for all your cords your cables now, this one doesn't flip off like the old one. The other one just kind of flipped down like this. This one, it just comes off. But the main difference here is you've got a built-in, you don't need an adapter for Ethernet anymore. It forgoes one of the USB ports for an Ethernet adapter. And then you've got your HDMI and your USB stuff there. And then you just put this down like so. Let's see, I'm trying to do this looking through my phone. Okay, I'm just going to do it tactily. Screw it. Wait. Um, there we go. All together. Just slides right back in there. No problem. So you notice on the uh, chair here, and I, I, and I purposely kind of wanted to do it, you know, I wanted to give you guys good contrast. So I'm kind of recording this against the dark chair background. These are the red and blue Joy-Cons, just like you could get with your original. Uh, my original, I got the gray Joy-Cons, so these are nice and colored. I don't have them attached to my Switch, though. Um, and I'll show you why in a moment. There's really no change in them. You know, everything that you had 
with the old switch is just the same on the new one. Supposedly, maybe there's a little bit better analog sticks, but people are still reporting Joy-Con drift, which sucks. And my main complaint about these Joy-Cons is they're not any bigger. Yeah, they're, you know, they're neat. They're, you can use them as like this. You can use them on the console. You can use them, you know, uh, handheld like this and, you know, play old games. But when holding them like this, they're so thin. And they're so small. The buttons are small. They're cramped. They're closed together. You know, that's why I did those videos on all of those other Switch accessories like cases and controllers. Because I have fairly larger hands. And this is not comfortable to play in its default. Even when even when these are connected to the Switch itself. They're just not all that comfy. So, there is that. Now let's bring out the uh, main event itself. Here is the Switch OLED model. <coughs> Looking through the phone there. Let's turn it on. So here you go. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, even looking at the, the, this through my iPhone screen, you can tell this is really sharp. That blue, the white, the way it pops. We've got Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance going. If I go home here, there's our home screen. And so before I show you any more of the actual switch on itself, you see these are that Split Pad Pro that I reviewed on the channel a while back. I can slide them off like that if I want to, but one thing you'll notice immediately, oopsie, one thing that you'll notice, quit it. <laughs> one thing that you'll notice is that the old Joy-Cons, whatever you plugged into the sides of the Switch, they felt a little wobbly. They felt loose. They kind of just rattled around in there a little bit. It just feels a lot more premium. Like, they fit onto the rails a lot nicer. You know, it just works. And that's the... That's one of the overall themes I would totally say about the Switch OLED is that it just feels more premium. The plastic doesn't feel as cheap. It feels like there's a little bit more substance to it. If I flip it over to the back side, you notice on like on the old one, there's a bunch of extra like serial number and a whole bunch of stickers and whatever information under here. That is no longer the case. You got a small little switch logo and look at the kickstand. This is the best part on the back because if you're familiar with the Surface Pro or Surface Go lines of tablets, this kickstand goes all the way across, and it's sturdy. I can put this at any angle. I can set it down on my chair back here, and I can move it up. I can move it, you know, flat. I can, well, this isn't a flat surface, so it's not really that good, but I have put it down on my desk and just tried it just for the heck of it. I normally wouldn't play it in kickstand mode, but hey, you know, the, the kickstand is way better. And then you notice that they put, um, let's see, where is it? Yeah, so like, it just, everything is a lot cleaner. You still have your SD card, your micro SD card slot here. Now the old one, they had it where it just flipped straight down um, under the tiny little worthless kickstand that the old model had. But the OLED, it goes in sideways. You just kind of lay it flat and go slide it in, and it works beautifully. So there you go. That's your kickstand. And like I said, it just feels a lot better. So the two main attractions to the Switch OLED model, of course, first and foremost, or most obviously, is the OLED screen. This baby is sharp. You know what? I genuinely, um, it's going from like a 6.2 to like a 7 inch screen. You wouldn't think that is a whole lot of difference, but it does help. And the screen goes really close to the bezels. You can't even hardly see it because you got a black background here. But like, 
you know, you've got the black bezel. And the, the advantage of OLED is that when you have a black, when you have black on your screen, it looks black. It doesn't look like a muddy, washed out gray. It doesn't look, you know, like just, it doesn't look like an LCD screen. It is super vivid, super sharp. Um, so we have some Castlevania going on right now. I'm going to try to play a little bit through the Oh god, this is... Wait, okay. This is really hard to try to play through the screen. <laughs> I just beat this boss. I don't know why I'm going this way, but I'll just kill a few dudes. I just got my double jump in this game. Huzzah. Double jump for the win. But you can just see. Look at the backgrounds. Look at the blue sky through the windows. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see the whole screen there. I mean, it looks, I mean, it looks so good. When I saw even like uh, Circle of the Moon, I've played several games on this so far, just to even a little bit, just to see what different games look like. I've played some NES classic stuff. I've played Castlevania a lot this last weekend. A little bit of Circle of the Moon, a little bit of Harmony of Dissonance. And I will absolutely get to Aria of Sorrow at some point. But this screen is mighty fine looking. That is what I got to say. I mean, God, I, I, even looking through my phone, I can tell it just looks super crisp. Give me that heart. Now, this music in this game is not very good. I mean, I love Castlevania music, but this is definitely one of the weakest. So let's uh, let's pop out here. And let's... Let's go back into Circle. I'll show you another one real quick. So while I'm loading this, um, I did... See, look at that black level. Look at the black on that you know it's meant to be black it doesn't look the least bit gray this is beautiful i love these games so and remember if you if you were back in the day and you had an original game boy advance <laughs> you remember how dark this game was you didn't have a backlight but God, that blue there on the background. Got my shield. Oh, yeah. The, okay, I was trying to remember where I was in this game. So we get it. I mean, look at how that, just the contrast of that. Mm, that is mighty good looking, I gotta say. And, it, you know, I was watching some video footage of these games on my computer. Like, somebody just did a review of them. And, you know, I'm getting my new computer here soon, hopefully. And I was looking at it going, God, you know, I wouldn't mind having an OLED monitor for my computer. I'm just saying. Because, God, this looks good. I mean, it's just, I love how colors are just, they to pop out. So, flat out, do I like the screen? Absolutely. Absolutely. It looks really good. Um, that is the first thing that you're going to notice. Now, the other thing, now watch, I can still do my magnification. I can pan around. Let's look at my, okay, my battery is still pretty good, about half. I played this most of the day Sunday while watching football, and it lasted me a lot longer than my old launch switch would have. I'll guarantee you that. I am, um, I guess I forgot to really, I don't know how much like how exactly how many hours i got with it but like i said coming from a launch unit where i was never really all that impressed with the battery life now again it's going to depend on how much of a demanding game you're playing like if you're playing mario odyssey doom eternal something like that you're probably going to suck the battery down a little more but 
you know, if you're playing something a little bit lighter, yeah, it'll last a little bit more, and it depends on how much brightness level you have. Um, it just depends on all those different kind of factors. But what I will say, the battery life, if you do have a launch switch, is significantly better, at least from what I've experienced so far. Like, it, it I don't know how significantly necessarily, but it is for sure noticeable. So battery life and, of course, your OLED screen are the two major improvements there are, if you're looking for any performance improvements, processor, more RAM, no. There is no extra performance you're going to get from the OLED switch. Now, it does come with double the, on, or double the internal storage, so that is at least better. I mean, it's still laughable when you think about how large games are. What is it? It went from like 32 to 64. Ooh, 64 gig. I have games that are double, triple size of that on other systems or PC. But, um, you know, so there are little, there are, there are, like, there are improvements. It's just, why does it always do that when I go into that game? It always hits L for some reason. We'll just do a little grind here while I'm talking. So you have something to look at. Um, but it is good. Um, you know, and the, one of the main reasons I thought about canceling my pre-order was simply because, yeah, duh, obviously they're going to release another system here eventually. Hopefully it will be something similar to the Switch format or like the Steam, um, I was going to call it a Steam machine, the Steam Deck that's coming out later this year. You know, this seems to be the new form factor because, hey, we're getting portable technology that can actually be powerful enough to run modern games on handheld hardware with damn good screens to boot. So you see there, actually, you know what? Let's go to a different game. You know what? Let's uh, play a little bit of Mario Odyssey, shall we? I'll show you a different game. we got some Doom on there because of course we do. And I wish the storage, I wish it was faster. You know, everything is going SSD now. Like, the loading times on this are absolutely noticeable. Um, you know, even I played a little bit of Metroid Dread. Um, I gotta admit, I'm not super... Super Mario Odyssey! Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, even that red. Look at how just bright and vivid that is. It just looks so good. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I forgot. What was I even going to say? I forgot. Just let's you enjoy this for a moment. Oh, we got the jump rope people. Oh, yeah. Do this on a screen to screen. This is going to suck. Am I close enough? It's a little hard judging depth when I'm look. Yeah, so I was looking at two screen, looking through two screens. It's a little tough to judge depth. Um. But, oh, the yeah, the loading speeds, that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, just having solid-state drives and everything. And I know cartridges, you know, if you... And you can store stuff on the internal storage or SD card. But, you know, there are load times on a lot of games. But this is my favorite level, or one of them, in Mario Odyssey. This game is just so good. So good. And... Just zipping around with Mario. Whee! Now you notice too, it gets pretty dang loud. Yeah, crank it.
the speakers have not only improved like volume wise i think let me turn that down and leave that again there we go um they just the they sound better like the sound separation the sound stage sort of thing it just sounds better um they definitely improved the speakers a little bit they don't sound quite as tinny as the old switch so those are the types of improvements that you're gonna see on the switch again no performance boosts or anything like that but um those are the types of things that you're gonna see on the oled switch um if you primarily play on the in like docked you're not going to notice anything um this upgrade is not for you yeah look at this let's watch mario jam out a little bit here get on stage kick it mario there you go <laughs> um if you play in handheld mode you're not really going to notice anything. I mean, you can get a broadband adapter if you really want to go hardwired. Um, but if you play in handheld mode, which I do, especially since at any time, uh, if I need to read some text, boom, I've got a magnifier. Hey, what's up, Mario? He's jamming around in his costume there. But um, I have a zoom feature where I can read text. And a lot of times I like to sit in my recliner and read audiobooks or listen to podcasts, you know, or just use it away from my TV. Of course, there are times where I'd love to hook it up to my TV in the dock, and I do. Um, but the fact is that I can play this portably, and having the larger screen, the very just crisp screen, I mean, the more I use this OLED the more I like it and kind of the more I don't really regret cancel or, or I don't regret um, keeping my pre-order. So, you know, there's just a couple of, you know, let's go to, let's go to Doom because that'll have some dark backgrounds. You know, again, if you see, you know that you really notice it where you have contrasting colors, you have, you have deep blacks, you have, um, you know, good contrast. You'll notice that kind of thing. <clears throat> but of course, I have to have Doom on every platform I own. It's my favorite game, of course. Why would I not do that? Mmm, that looks so good. I mean, look at those walls. I mean, they just pop out at you, that blue on the carpet there. Oh, I'm not used to playing Doom on a console. I'm so keyboard and mouse, you guys. I'm like walking around feeling like I'm drunk. And I could go to the secret, but I'll just go into the dark room over here. God, I, I don't remember the last time I actually went the right way. Uh, what is the use? Okay, that's, I was trying to remember what the use button was. There we go. Yeah, I'm using my kickstand, so I don't have to do this, or my, my uh, not kickstand, I'm using my, um, the camera, tripod, yeah, that's the word I wanted. Look at that blue, though, I mean, that blue, it just pops, man, the gray, but the blue, mmm, loving it, I love OLED, what can I say? Um, but yeah, so now I can actually play and use things, like, I would never be able to do this out if I was holding my phone. So now you can at least see me trying to play this. And with these giant controllers here. Okay, oh yeah, left trigger is run, okay. Hey, imp. Duh. Die, imp. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's hard looking through two screens and holding this and trying to keep it fairly steady, but let's see there. Oh, you can tell the wall there. Oh wait. Yep. There we go. Secret. Come at it the other way and go get our armor in their pool here. But, um, yeah, I mean, really that's what there is to say about the switch. 
Um, the bottom line is if you have a original switch, this is 350 bucks. So the regular switch being 300, I would say if you don't have a switch already and you want one, this is absolutely the model you want. The OLED is definitely the way to go. It is worth the extra 50 bucks. If you have an existing switch, it's really a tough call because I struggled with this. I pondered it and pondered it for the last week myself before this came out, whether I was gonna cancel. And I, I really have to say it's up to you. If you think the larger screen, the more vivid screen is gonna be worth it, because that is honestly, that is your main, um, that is your main advantage. And that might be enough for some people. A little better battery life. Um, if you have a launch switch, for sure. Now, if you waited and you got that switch model that came out in what, 2019, 2020, you either have the Switch Lite or you have that upgraded model that came out that had a little bit of battery life as it is, then I would say it's a harder upgrade. If you have a launch unit, I definitely notice enough like build quality and screen and battery improvements that, yeah, the more I use this, the more I don't regret buying it. But if you have one of those newer models that came out a couple years ago, Ugh, unless you really, really got to have the latest and greatest, I would hold off because I would think it's inevitable that Nintendo is going to release something. You know, maybe they meant maybe they meant to have a more upgraded unit, but because of COVID and the chip shortages and everything else that went with the last year and a half, maybe they couldn't. So they just settled on improving the screen and some of the stuff that they could do fairly easily working remotely or, you know, for whatever. Um, I kind of hope that we don't get a new Switch for a while just because I did buy one of these and I would really be kind of upset if I found that, oh, by the way, in June, we're in 2022, we're coming out with a new one, you know, an all new upgraded processor system. I'm like, God dang it. You know, it could be inevitable, but I hope we give us a little bit of time to enjoy the OLED model. Um... And I do really want to quickly talk about the transfer process. So if you do have an old switch and you want to transfer, it's not too bad. The one thing that I would say that I don't like is during the setup process, you know, there is no screen reader. There's no screen reader period on the switch. So blind users are out of luck. You have to have sighted assistance. But even low vision users, you cannot enable the zoom feature until you get to this home screen. So until you're able to go here and then you go down to settings, you know, it's under the settings here and it's way down under a system, I believe. But um, until you're to this screen, you can't do it. So if you need magnification, what I ended up doing, like you could either put it into the dock or just to see, I was testing how good my camera was on my new phone. I just held my camera up to the uh, to the screen or over the screen, kind of like I'm recording now, uh, to use my magnifier app on my phone to see it. So you go through the initial setup, and then it'll ask you if you want to import from another system. You tell it yes, and both units have to be plugged in, and they have to be next to each other. And what you do is you have to first sign into your Nintendo account that was on your old Switch. So you sign in on your new Switch with that account. You tell it, you know, you walk through, it walks you through the process of importing. And it'll say, okay, to get yourself ready, you want this to be the target system. And then it'll tell you, okay, go back to your old Switch and do the setup. So then you go to your old Switch you go under settings and you transfer and you tell it that is the source system and it tra it it will copy all of your save game data and your profile now interestingly there's not an option to just do a hard copy everything 
like, you know, almost like a direct hard drive to hard drive copy. Um, it's going to copy your saves in your data profile, but it's not going to copy your actual games. So once you have your game, once you have your profile copied over, you still have to go to the eShop and download the games that you want to install, which may or may not be a good or bad thing because I kind of used it as an excuse to, well, I'm only going to install the games that I regularly play or that I want to play here soon. So I own more than this, but here's my game library of what I've installed. Um, there's still a lot here, but I do own a fair few more that I don't have installed. So I kind of wish you had another option. I mean, even if they had a thing where you could connect like USB to USB-C so it would be faster and then just do a complete system transfer. That's what I wish they had where I could just be like, you know what? I want my save data. I want all profiles that's on this machine. I want all my games chuck them over and then when i took my sd card out of my old system and put it in the new one it, it told me because everything that i downloaded seemed to have fit on the system itself at least at the time it was still downloading the bigger games or some of the games that i had queued up but when i put my sd card in it um it said that it had to basically delete everything on the card so you will want to have your save game data on the Switch itself, at least initially. <clears throat> and then I think you're able to copy it off to the SD card. And then if you're a Switch Online subscriber, there are some cloud saves and stuff. So anyway, um, I think that's really about it. That is the Nintendo Switch OLED model. It is available now. I don't know... Uh, if this system is as hard to find as a PS5 or a Xbox Series console, but hopefully people are able to find it soon enough. And like I said, if you have a long, if you have a launch switch, eh, maybe worth the upgrade. It's up to you. If you have one of the newer switches, eh, maybe quite a bit less so. But if you don't have a switch and want one. Right now, this is absolutely the model that you want. You would want the OLED switch. The 50 bucks extra is totally worth it because this screen, baby, is sharp. So there you go. Um, and they did, as I'm recording this, uh, Nintendo just did have their um, Animal Crossing announcement thing direct today, which I really didn't watch because I'm not really into Animal Crossing. But they did also, you notice that my virtual console stuff here from Switch Online is there. They did announce the pricing for their expansion pack that I mentioned in the channel update video recently. And it's coming October 25th, and it's going to be, for one user, 50 bucks per year. Now, currently we're paying, what, 20 bucks for... The Switch Online, which isn't too bad, you know, I mean, you get some games, you get online play, you get backups, whatever. But it's over double the price? I was thinking 15, 20 tops extra. Now, would I love to play some N64 games? And especially if they added some Game Boy and Game Boy Color games? Maybe Game Boy Advance? I don't know. Yeah, then it would be if... If they would announce, I'm secretly hoping that on the 25th, they're like, oh yeah, and by the way, we didn't tell you this before, but now that it's available, here's some Game Boy stuff that's been rumored forever as well. That's what I'm hoping for. Then it might be a little bit more worth it. But I don't know, man. Like 30 bucks extra a month for some Genesis games, some N64 games, and like an Animal Crossing expansion, if you already own the game, you don't have to pay for the expansion that they announced today. I, I don't know. I mean, the, pro the other problem, and I would be more open to pay the 49 if Nintendo understood 
how online worked and actually like understood what they had in this vast library of past consoles they've got. They've got like 40, 40 years of games almost. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, N64, GameCube. Hell, you might be able to emulate some of those on here. But even if you only went up to the N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. Genesis, if they brought things from like the TurboGrafx-16, what they did with the virtual console on the Wii, I would love to play... Um, I would love to play Alien Crush, Devil's Crush, a couple other, like those are a couple really good pinball games that I played, that I learned about and played on the Wii Virtual Console for TG-16. And they don't have to trickle three games out every two months or three months. They could have just this immense backlog library of classics and they're just not doing it even with their own stuff even if you exclude some of the stuff some of the games that might be in licensing hell you know trying to get licenses to re-release them from who knows who owns the publishing rights to some of these older games and franchises but even without those troubles there's still a buttload of stuff that they could release and if they even treated it more like the Wii Virtual Console, like they were releasing games every week. You know, granted, people had some complaints about that a little bit as well. But it's still better than their, the way they're trickling out games on their Nintendo and Super Nintendo online here. So, I don't know. I mean, I really do want to play some N64 stuff. But, mm, I mean, $50 a year, you know, like, yeah, okay, that's what you pay for something like Xbox Live or something. But even then, you get discount codes and stuff. Um, and a lot of people are sort of thinking the same way. You know, it's just, I, I, you got to think that Nintendo should really offer more incentive. If they said, okay, we're going to take this online stuff seriously and you're going to get a ginormous backload of games, or we're, we're going to commit to releasing, you know, a couple, at least one or two games a week for the foreseeable future, then I would be more open. But right now, I don't know, man. I really want to play some F-Zero X because I love that game. Like when that game finally comes out on the N64 stuff later, I would love to play that, but 30, I don't know. Anyway, I did want to append that to the end of this Nintendo Switch OLED review because I think it is applicable. You know, you're going to get your Switch, you want to play online, you want to have access to a lot of these virtual console games. It's something to consider. So there you go, guys. That is my thoughts on the new Nintendo Switch OLED model. Hope you guys liked the video. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. You can follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited, illegally cited.com, or right here on YouTube. So until next time, I will chat with you again later.